Hi everybody. Let me start thanking the chairs for permitting to play the video during the session because we couldn't attend in person. You can send us an email, your feedback. So a word about Emacs, which is an extensible, customizable, self-documenting editor. It has major modes for editing all computer languages. For semantic web, we have XML and RDF entry modes already developed. However, they are not meant for the laypersons. So we are trying to intend to bridge the gap between semantic engineers and laypersons. So what we did is to extend one of its knowledge organization tools called the org mode. A few words about the server Gnosis, which is also a triple store, which is developed as a web application on top of Plone. So Gnosis creates a neighborhood graph for every node and stores it persistently in the knowledge base. The SVG graphs that we generate can be hyperlinked from node to node. The Gnosis supports version control of all changes, including branching of both data and metadata. You can read more about Gnosis from the official GNO website. Let's begin with the Gnosis mode demonstration. We'll begin to see how we connect to the Gnosis server using Emacs. So we start Emacs and put it in Gnosis mode and provide a URL, login with a username and password. And of course, we can now start searching and navigating through the graphs of the knowledge network. So here what you see as OT is essentially same as a class. So the city class can be viewed and its graph can be viewed. And the graph is rendered as a link. And the links are seen in a browser as an SVG graph. And they are hyperlinked so you can move from place to place and you will see that the node and the focus and all the triples attached to it are shown as the neighborhood graph. So here we see the neighborhood graph of the lake. So now we'll look at the folding and unfolding of the graph. We take the example of the class place in the ontology of DBpedia. So here we look for all the details of the neighborhood. And since it's so cluttered, we can fold relations, attributes, and the snapshot metadata. And then we can also, of course, look at the graph in the browser. And SVG graphs being scalable, they can be made small or big without loss of information. Now let's see how to insert objects as instances. So we can use the menu on the top of the editor. So the node New Delhi is added by typing the name the editor automatically expands and provides what relations are possible. And it expands and gives the possible expansions by auto-completion. So having committed the link, the New Delhi is a member of the city, now we go ahead and add one more object. This time, we will type India, and India is a member of the class country. Having done that, we commit this as well to the database. Let's see how to define an object property, what we call a relation type. An RT can be added, so we'll use the example of has capital, a binary relation. I'm 
and here we have to define the domain and the range of the relation. Subject type 1 is the domain, and subject type 2 will be the range. And we choose the object type node for subject type 1. So we choose the class country as domain and we'll choose another class city for the range. Having done that, we will set that this relation is applicable only between tokens and its inverse name would be capital of. And having done that, we submit the relationship to the database. And we can now see the graph of the relation type just being made. Okay, let us see how Gnosis does collaboration. So we'll ask another user to log in this time. So my friend Rajiv is logging in place of me. And this time, he goes and searches if his favorite node exists. He realizes that India can have a capital and he adds New Delhi as the capital of India. And then he updates the database and says that it's a public. And now you see the graph so far made. The colorful nodes are individuals and the white ones are the classes. Let's see how to compare changes between two snapshots of a node. So here we see that there are two users who have made changes to the node India and it shows that the history that there is one previous node 1288 and we can see in the other window the details of the ancient node and now we will use Emacs ability to compare the two buffers by using the compare tool. So we use two buffers, buffer A and buffer B. And then we'll be able to see the differences between them laid side by side in the editor. So wherever there are differences, you'll see them in the gray color patch. So currently we can also export the knowledge networks in RDF. So we'll use place as an example. You can use RDF in entry notation for the time being. We are also working on XML notation. So this is an already existing entry mode which we use to show. Okay, please visit our lab to find out installation instructions for Gnosis and Gnosis mode. And for ARG mode, you can visit ARG mode. I wish to acknowledge our institute TIFR for funding the project and the GNU project as well as the Google Summer of Code and of course we have a lot of work still left. So we are working on communication between collaborators, conflict resolution, importing from and exporting to OWL, multiple ontology editing, merging the graphs to create larger networks and of course a lot of bugs to fix. Thank you and please send your feedback to lab at the knowledge.org.